www.ebitcoinmarketingtoday.com. Educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray feeling good. Our guest today is Peter Elides of Stock Market Cycles. Uh, Peter, are you on the line? I am. Can you hear me? You're coming in just absolutely perfectly, and I've got your first chart up, and it looks like you're looking for a potential high in here. You want to tell the folks what you're looking at? Yeah, this is a cycle projection chart. This is kind of the the basis of my life in the, in the stock market and has been for several decades now, Larry. Mm -hmm. uh, this chart, um, this is something that I worked on for a long time. It, the, the, the theory behind this, uh, we should always give attribution, comes from J.M. Hurst, mm -hmm. um, who wrote a book several decades ago, probably in the late 1960s, called the profit magic of stock transaction timing. And um, that that's the book that started me off in the stock market. I, I don't know if I told you this story before, but I saw the book on a friend's uh, coffee table. And I said, mm -hmm. can I borrow that book? And he said, yeah, sure. Which is always a big mistake lending out a book because I sell <laughs> that book on my bookshelf. So. But uh, I, I read it and I was fascinated by it. And the mm -hmm. thing that appealed to me most of all in the book was there's a paragraph or two in there talking about news and the market and saying that news really has absolutely nothing to do with timing the stock market. And mm -hmm. I think those of us that work technically kind of always felt that intuitively. I certainly felt that intuitively. And when I saw that, I said, this is going to be very interesting. So um, I worked on that book and, and from that point on little by little became fascinated by it Hearst initially started out with moving averages and and uh, crossings of moving averages and half span moving averages but then his work advanced into these uh, offsets uh, one of which you're, you're looking at now if that's chart number one yes hold up one second I'm quickly going to bring up my chart number one here so I'm identify what we're looking at. Okay. You see a bunch of numbers on there, right? Yep. So do all are, do all the viewers have access to this, people that hear me now? Can they yes, see this? Yes, they, it's, it's live and they're able to see it, so we're in good right. shape. Okay. So this is a weekly chart of the S&P 500 cash index, and there's the bottom down at 36, 36, 87 in the middle of June. And this offset, that red line that's moved forward in time, is simply um, an offset of the weekly median price, mid-price, the midpoint of every bar. So the blue line represents joining the midpoints of all the bars. If you take that line, the blue line that joins the middle point of every weekly bar, and move it forward 10 weeks, you're going to get a projection for a nominal 20-week cycle. So mm -hmm. the offset is one half time span of the cycle itself. And as you can see there, I've, I've put in some uh, uh, numbers, significant numbers, and I'll tell you what they are. What we're looking at is a bottom of 36, 36, 87. If you notice where the blue line crosses above the red offset line, I have a little light green horizontal line there to mark the exact crossing. It took place at 3961.83. That's 324.96 points. That's also there on the right written down above the low of 36.36.87. So what the cycle theory tells us 
for this nominal 20-week projection, 10-week offset, is that that should be the halfway point of this particular projection. If it is the halfway point, then the projection is going to call for 4286.79. You see that line represented above with a red horizontal line. That is the projection for the nominal 20-week uh, cycle. Okay, now, we're not requiring perfection here. Hearst did not require perfection. So what he did was he took plus or minus 10% of the projected level. Uh, so you asked plus or minus 10% of what? Well, it's 10% of the projected high to the original low. So if you take the distance between that 4286.79 and the 36.87, 36 and that would give you the complete projected move, and then you take 10% of that. So you add 10% to the 4286.79 and you subtract 10% and that gives you the projection window and that's the shaded window we're looking at mm -hmm. with a solid red line going across okay so the projection calls for 4286.79 plus or minus 10% which is 4221.96 to 4351.97 as you and I are speaking the high on the S&P is 4257.91. Mm -hmm. So we can see we're really close to that projected high. Okay, so <clears throat> the next question when we're doing cycle projections, we usually work in sequences and we say, okay, we know we have this projection to between 4222 and 4352 rounded off. Mm -hmm. What if we get up there? Or if we get to the high end of the projection, will it be possible to get even higher projections? That's a very important question now because we want to know coming into this projection window whether this should be a relatively important high or just a high on the way to further projections to the upside. The way we determine that is we go to the next longer offset, which is a 20-week projection. Are you able to bring that up, Larry? Uh, yes, I can. The second one, I certainly can. I've got it ready right here. Just one second here. Um, I had a couple questions here when we're when you're finished with your presentation sure. here because I think sure. the folks would like to like to hear some of this stuff. Hold on one second, and we'll get it up here. It takes me a little while. Here we go. We're ready to go, and there it is. Everybody has it now. Okay. So you can still see that shaded gray area with and the numbers with the projection, right? Okay, if you if you look at that chart, you can see that over the next one, two, three, four weeks, we can get up to the higher end of the projection window and not cross the red offset line, which is the one that would generate even higher projections. Were we to cross that line now sometime in the next four to six weeks, we would get projections to new all-time highs. Is that possible? Well, if we can stay up here for three or four weeks, going on to five weeks, uh, even, maybe even come down and come back up again. But the important thing is that you cross the midpoint that represents the blue lines, cross above the red line in this 20-week offset, nominal 40-week projection. I would contend that that's not going to happen. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. back folks we're speaking with peter lighty stock market cycles the first question for you peter is what will be your trigger to uh, go short do you wait for a down close or do you sell at the top end of the channel that was the question well if we get to the, the top end of the channel uh, then i would be uh, i would say that you're relatively safe in shorting and of course as always you want to maintain a reasonable stop out but I would say if you get to the top end of the channel that uh, a, a pretty close stop would be warranted because you're in pretty safe territory in terms of selling short let me say also that I do uh, these same projections Larry on a daily chart and the daily chart actually allows for a higher price on the S&P for this same projection uh, I use offsets for those that might be interested, of 48.4 and 55.3 market days, those to me would be the equivalent of a 10-week offset. And if we do that, then the range of projections is 42.27 to 44.88. So there is about 100 or 130 point higher potential projection. Uh, so in, answer, in response to your question though, one of the ways to do it was wait for the higher end of the range because you're the higher up, the closer you get to that higher end, I think the safer a short sale would be. But obviously, if we don't reach the higher end and now that we are in the projection window, we want to be watching for some kind of trigger. Uh, one of the triggers that I use on a very short term basis that I think is a great delineator of short term trend in the market is an exponential 10 day moving average. So if you threw an exponential 10 day on the S&P, and uh, I would say that that an indication that once we get into, especially if we get up to that full number of 42.87, 42.86 and change, uh, any move below the exponential 10 day would be a great trigger for a short sale. And that way you won't have to wait too long to get that signal either. Okay, that's good. We have another question for one of our listeners in Utah, and he's asking uh, why on your charts you don't show any oscillators or indicators of any kind. Because I'm not interested in oscillators <laughs> and indicators of any kind. You know, this uh, to me, this is I the answer. Yeah, <laughs> this is the answer to the market. Now, 
I'm not telling you that I don't look at other indicators, that I don't look at momentum indicators, other things that might give me confidence in terms of my projections. But if you stranded me on a desert island with the, the, the choice of only having one tool in the stock market, this would be the tool. How many yeah. times do those that use oscillators, momentum indicators, whether it be something like the MACD or the RSI, and you say, oh, girl, look at this. we got a great divergence here. Well, good luck. Two weeks later, the markets continued up for another couple of hundred S&P points, and it mm -hmm. didn't work out that time. Now, I'm not claiming that these projections are 100% accurate. In fact, as part of the software um, that we use, Larry, we have a way to determine the effectiveness of the projections over what period of time. So this particular offset, I, I haven't done it now, and I'm wondering if I can do it quickly now, if I take a look at this. Is this your custom-built software, Peter? Yes, it is. It okay. is indeed, yes. Mm -hmm. It's the custom-built software, and let me take a look. The, the beautiful part about this is you can say, show statistics, and when I look at the statistics for this offset, um, it's 77% rounded off. In other words, for the last 19 years, since May of 2003, 59 out of 77 projections have been met. And it breaks it down both into upsides and downsides. The upsides were 71%. The downsides were 82%. So it's just a fabulous tool because, it, you know, sometimes you, you get a projection and you look at the statistics and it might say something pretty low, like in the 50s. You very seldom will get a reading lower than 50%. But 50% is, a, you know, that's a flip, flip the coin thing, saying mm -hmm. whether you're going to meet the projection yeah, or not. Sure is. We look, we, look for, uh, we look for readings uh, around... Two out of three, so that'd be 67, 68 percent or higher. And the higher they are, the better off you are in terms of your probability. Mm -hmm. uh, so this one is a really good one, 76.6 percent .6 of the times. And this goes back uh, almost 20 years now, yeah. to 2003. <laughs> You know, the last time you were on, you were saying we were, this was in June, and you were saying we were looking at a pretty tradable bottom, and boy, we've certainly gotten that over the last six weeks. We've had a pretty yeah, good that, move up. That worked out great, because I, I, yeah. happen, I happened to have done a, uh, an interview with Neil Cavuto of Fox mm -hmm. 7 News on the exact day of the low, and mm -hmm. I was calling for a low there, and so mm -hmm. it, was, uh, it was pretty exciting. If folks want to watch that, if they go to YouTube uh, and just look up Eliades and and uh, I guess I think Kabuto, they'll be able to watch that interview that I did the exact day of the low. Well, you were really close. I think we were within a day or two when you were on, and you said it would be bottoming around that time, and it certainly did. Yeah. I have a question for you um, from my perspective. Did you ever get involved with Ray Forchette and the Cyclotech folks uh, that were helping trying to get? Uh, you know, the cycle stuff moving for uh, Hearst. Did you ever get involved with that? Never did get involved with them, and I never met Ray. I was well aware of his name. Mm -hmm. But uh, the work that they started to do is the work that got me interested in these offsets because before sure. that, mm -hmm. before that, uh, Hearst was simply doing the moving average work. And, and uh, uh, you know, it's interesting. Hearst. Hearst had an interesting reputation. I don't know if we've talked about it before, Larry, but uh, a lot of people thought he was a little cuckoo. And, uh, that, <laughs> he was that, that eccentric. Was a, yeah, that, there was a yeah. rumor that he had gone, uh, he had uh, been committed to a mental institution. No, no, he, li he moved to Grass Valley to go fishing is what he did. He was yeah. my account. He, I had I had his account at Drexel Burnham. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. I was the one that you know got he and Ed Dobson together so they could put that uh, six-hour video program that uh, that worked out really well, showing the cycle stuff and offsets and things like that. But you know he he was eccentric, but you know he basically he, he worked at Use and he did very little trading, but uh, he loved fishing and he moved to Grass City and the uh, yeah Grass Valley and Nevada City up there in the in the mountains. And another one of my accounts was there, Clint Walker, and they became friends and they'd fish together. They, they loved fishing. But he, he was he was just eccentric. He wasn't nuts. Did you ever meet her personally? Yeah, so sure, yeah. 
met him. I met him. I met him twice. Once in the Drexel office yeah. and once in San Francisco. That was the only two times I ever met him. Yeah, Ed Dobson yeah. did tell me. I think Dobson. Uh, did he write a book about him or? He probably well, I did. I talked to Ed just a few weeks ago, you know, because, oh, we got a break coming up. But would you stay with us through the break, Peter, if you could? Sure. I got two or sure. three more questions here, but the, uh, the music hasn't started yet. But um, I talked to Ed, oh, probably about two months ago, because John Hill, who was my mentor, is 97 now, and he's in a nursing wow. home. And he, he doesn't know anybody's name, but Ed said if you put a chart in front of him, he said he can tell you exactly, <laughs> honest to God, he said he can tell you exactly what's going on, but he won't remember your name. But uh, he's still in pretty good health, and he's walking every day, and uh, just in la-la land. So take a break here with uh, Steve, uh, with uh, Peter Lides. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector, as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. We're speaking with Peter Light. He's a stock market psychos. And, Peter, we have a listener. Believe it or not, he's one of the old-timers. He's got two questions, and that is, one, do you ever use uh, moving averages? Oh, yes, I do. Yeah, okay. very much so. I mean, I don't, yeah. you've got to be careful with them, but they're, they're mm -hmm. great guidelines, sure. I mean, the, okay. the popular popular ones in particular I use because I want to know what other people are looking at, too. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah I mean, mm -hmm. I, in fact, I, if the gentleman recalls, I mentioned to you that one, my, one of my best short-term trend indicators is an exponential 10-day moving average. So mm -hmm. uh, I, de I definitely use moving averages, though, yes. Okay, the second question that the gentleman, hey, he's got two, two really good questions here. The second one was, did you ever use displace moving average, you know, when you move it forward? Do you ever do those? Well, well, that's exactly what we're looking at. That's what these projections are all about. Now, a lot of people use them, but they don't know how to use them because they just use them um, 
I mean, I've played with them in the past, and uh, instead of using real-time moving averages, people displace them and think that when you get above them or below them, that's a buy or a sell signal. Uh, actually, what it is, if you place them correctly, is they give you projections as to where the market's going. These yeah. offset lines that we're looking at are displaced moving averages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that they, they, they were. I know, remember Amos Hostetter used those at Commodity Corporation. Another question that he has, it brought back a whole lot of memories for me that I used very, because I love the Hearst stuff too, was uh, the uh, concept of the valid trend line. Did you ever do, do a lot of work? I know you probably did some work with trend lines, but those valid trend lines to me were, were very, very good. And, any comment on that? Well, I think one of the concepts that Hearst used way, way back in his original work, perhaps even in his original book, I don't remember, yeah. is relates to the question that you asked me. You said, well, yeah. you know, we're in the projection window, so what do we do now? Yeah. When do we act on that? And the way to act on that is, uh, it's not necessarily what you might define as a valid trend line, but if, if you get inside the projection window, then you can work some very short-term charts, five-minute 15-minute hourly charts mm -hmm. and and draw in uh, what you would consider to be the best trend line leading up to the top and wait for a break of that because once you start breaking trend lines after you've met projections, that should be your trigger on the downside. Yeah, I keep that book on my desk here. I've only got about 10 books that I keep on my desk and that Profit Magic of Stock t Transaction Timing came out in 1971 is when it was first uh, published by McGraw-Hill. And uh, yeah, so, there it, you go. Uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Well, the, those were okay. the questions we had, and I want to thank you for being with us today. Anything else you'd like to share with us? Uh, anytime you have something really good, like you always do, you know, please let me know. We'd love to have you on because, you know, we're – you got the perfect bottom the last time, and I know you're not going to be perfect all the time, but you do a lot of great work, and people follow you, and I think it's worth uh, – uh, you were a big help to us this last five or six weeks, and we certainly want to thank you for that. Oh, that was my pleasure. It's always great to talk to you. I always, I've always had great respect for your work, too. No, I just encourage people um, – obviously, to do a little self-promotion. People can see videos – uh, on YouTube. I haven't done one in quite a while now. I did one right within a, a few days of the bottom on YouTube. Yep, you sure did. And, yep. and then they're, they're now waiting for me to do another. And I'm, what, I'm <laughs> waiting for, what I'm waiting for is to be, uh, you know, be confident in terms of seeing a turning point because I think it's coming up. The other thing is I want to let, let people know that they can go to my website, stockmarketcycles.com. And we're in we're in a little bit of a hassle now with trade station because they're stopping their support of third party applications and so uh, wow. I can't necessarily offer people the software which we generally do but I can offer them a daily video which is part of my business right now that interprets the software from day to day so if they go to the website and just go to uh, register they can actually get a 14 day free trial of, of, of my daily videos uh, Peter have you ever taken a look at trading view software yeah, well obviously yes I have but I, I I've never done anything with it I mean what I that, that, you ought to take a look at my, it it's able to do a lot of stuff so I you know I, I'd, I'd have you take a look at that I I, I think it's got some and it's a number one you know, char charting package out there. So uh, really? it's pretty good. Yeah, it's the number one. It beats them all, that's for sure. That's fabulous. As far as numbers, I don't know anything about it. I I don't use that. I use CQG and, you know, Ensign is what I use. But uh, yeah. they, they do some great stuff, and it's easy to program from what I understand. So, listen, mm -hmm. I'm going to let you go, but thank you so much, and we'll have you on again really soon, okay? Always good to talk to you, Larry. You Thanks. bet, Peter. Thank you so much for being on. Peter Lighty's folks, Stock Market Cycles. I can hear the sound of uh, the che cheers that we have going on. Uh, we've got the market right on the new high here. Well, not quite on a new high. We're very, very close. Uh, what we're going to do now is we got to cover a few things uh, because this market really telegraphed that it wanted to go higher today. Let me show you why, folks. 
you know how much I enjoy looking at that 382 retracement, and it looked like that market was getting ready to fall out of bed yesterday. Well, guess what? The end of that mattress was right there at the 382 of the previous day's low before we had that big move when the Fed came in and made the announcement about the CPI or whatever it was. But there was your exact 382 yesterday coming in spot on, and now we're getting ready to make a new high. Now, I we know we're in, remember Stan Harley was on as our guest yesterday, and he said the window was the 11th and 12th. And of course, this is Friday in an up week in the summertime, so the chances of the market closing lower today, I think, would be pretty bad. But if we keep a very, very close eye on this next one, because, you know, and remember, I'm, I'm like Peter. I'm, I'm a technician. I look at the bars. If the bars tell me, and I'm not talking about where you can buy rum and Coke and stuff like that. I'm talking about these bars right here. And there's the Dow Jones. You can see the high we made there in January. Okay, there is your high we made in March on the solar eclipse. And here we are coming in. This is a perfect 135 pattern coming in here yesterday or today. Now it's stronger. We're at the 50% retracement of this thing. And if we close much stronger than this, there's a chance that this is going to make a new high. I don't think it can, but boy, oh boy, folks, it doesn't count. Trade what you see, not what you think. That's the main thing. But this is a one, three, five pattern. And, uh, you know, we're seeing divergences on certain things. Remember, the, the Russell was weak, and then it became quite strong, and all that's coming up. And, and forget the news. The news follows a trend. Don't worry about the news. Uh, it's going to be right there when you want to see it. So uh, pay attention to these next couple of days. Uh, I'll be watching them today and then also Sunday night real closely on the videos. But the fact that we made that 382 yesterday in the S&P said, wow, it looked like it had a chance to, you know, all it had to do was to close below 4235, and it did. And then what did it do right at the 382? It goes right back up again. Now, if it had broken more, then there'd be a chance. But stopping exactly at that 382, you know, you you got to expect, you got to respect that, boys and girls. There's this here. Here it is again. Just a perfect example of the same thing right before. This is where I first knew I was wrong. Let me get this up here. And believe me, I'm wrong enough, so I know I know what wrong means. Okay, here is the chart. Just the other day of the S&P on the way up. Okay, we had the big move. Look at the 382 pullback. Just exactly like we had last night. Bada bing, bada boom. We take a break. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the gold showing that three drive to a top pattern up there at 1824. Uh, the only th problem is, folks, we only dropped about 30 bucks. We got down to uh, 1796, uh, I believe, and now we're back to 1815. You know, this uh, may pop through and go even higher, but uh, there was nothing there. Uh, as far as a big correction after a three drive now we're so close to that top I'm assuming that it's going to be taken out either today or maybe Monday so we have to watch that there's a lot of cycle stuff in the in the uh, world as we know from uh, uh, Shane Smolian this week and then also yesterday uh, Stan Harley talked about the importance of where these cycles are and you know this is a weekend coming up in the summertime so this is where it happens. You know, it doesn't have to have a lot of volume up here to get these things moving. But it is quiet, but uh, it's still going higher, so it hasn't topped yet. It'll tell you when it's topped. That's definitely it. And if I'm correct, both the gold and the stock market should start down uh, on uh, probably Sunday or Monday. Now, if we're up really strong on Monday, whew, heaven knows where it's going to go. I'm not sure, but you know what? Nobody else is either. Now, let's talk just a tiny bit about one of the stocks that we talked about yesterday. <clears throat> I wanted to uh, just get it up here so we can uh, see it again, which was Disney because it had such a big move in it. Let's get a second here to get the thing up there. I hope this is it. No, that's not it. Just give me one second. Oh, what did I do? Did I lose it again? Uh, shucks, I can't find it. Anyway, we talked. Uh, is this it? Oh, no, <laughs> got too much. Oh, uh, well, let, let's get there. No, that's the DAX. I'm not going to worry about Disney. Anyway, we got up to, remember the Disney number that we were looking at was at 113. It went blasting through that and went all the way up to the 1.618 uh, of those other numbers. And that was telling us that it was at a real, you know, real critical level at that point, too. So th this is where we are, folks. We're, we're, we're setting on a day here. Friday in an up week, the odds of it closing lower after a big move above the opening are very, very slim. But to, you got to watch it Sunday or Monday. The only thing that would negate what we're looking at here as far as the targets that we're looking at, remember in the newsletter, we talked about the E-mini going to 43.69 this week. So far, the high has been 43.60. So we could hit 43.69. That's right in the wheelhouse of what Peter talked about. And my assumption is if we get up there, I will be uh, personally, I'll be looking to sell the S&P at, at 4370 and I will use a stop above 4400. And if I'm wrong, I'm going to get whacked for, you know, about uh, 12, I don't see about, about 1200 bucks. But if I'm right, it's going to be, it's going to be payday city. Now there could be news coming out over the weekend. I don't know about that. I don't care about that doesn't mean anything to me at all remember when we came on the show this week the main thing that we were watching was the big bottom that was happening in the uh, crude oil complex and we hit that one pretty much spot on 
hit the exact number on the 61% retracement at 87. Uh, 35 was the low. What we were predicting the low was 87.01. It went up and had a huge move and then a big pullback to the downside. Here again, this is what it was trying to tell you, much like what the S&P did. If I can just find that one, I'll be in good shape. Then this is not my good good quality here. I got so many charts to show you that it makes it a little difficult to uh, to to find the ones that I want because I can't mark them fast enough, and I, that's that's my fault. That's not yours. So let's get up here. Well, anyway, no, I can't find it, so I'm not going to fight it and do anything. Also, the bonds. Uh, continue to go lower. They don't have any friends, and they're going to get less and less friends. And the bond market is, you know, basically associated with the uh, Nasdaq because they, these are, you know, people you know borrow that money against that uh, start these little companies or something. So watch the Nasdaq because it'll run pretty much what the bonds do when they do run together. Right now they're not, but they could, and that's the key. Is sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. That's it. And guess what? I found the crude oil. Let's get it up here in just a second here. Did the same thing. And, you know, if you like ABCD, then you'll put this up. I did, we do a video about this almost every night. The target on that ABCD was right up there. We did actually 10 pips of the exact high, just shy of 95. And uh, so down it came, and now we're still in a corrective mode. We dropped about $1,500, and we're still correcting uh, in that uh, crude oil complex. But that low that we made down here, this is a really big 61% retracement, folks. And that goes back a long time, and we rallied. Oh, dear. We rallied, what, uh, 9%? No, 10% in two days. So that tells you maybe there is more life in this uh, complex. I know gasoline will probably start going up. It was a dollar sixty under where we were three weeks ago. And then I saw yesterday it already jumped 20 cents. So they must be following the commodity exchanges also. If you have any questions, folks, it's 877-927-6648. And uh, one of the questions that someone asked is, would I illustrate the concept of the valid trend line? You know, I think I could probably do that on the next chart. Just let me pull it up here, and I can do one very, very simply here in the gold market and I will show you what that means and there we go all right just one second and then we get back from the break I'll, po I'll post it and then you can take a uh, take a look at it so hold on one second I'll get this up this is a 15 minute chart on the gold all I'm going to do is to get it ready and uh, this is what I did for many years it was follow these uh, A, B, C, D and valid trend lines and by golly they work let me get this up here and uh, by the way, I was not close friends with, uh, you know, I only met uh, Jim Hurst a couple times, but I may, I introduced him to uh, Ed Dobson. And then because he was in that uh, Beverly Hills area, uh, he opened an account uh, with me. He traded, I think, three things over a four year period. But uh, he was he was very quiet. He was an engineer. You know, uh, I, I never went to dinner with him or anything. So all I. I talked to him on the phone, you know, quite a few times, but that was about it. A nice, love fishing, you know. Oh boy, you talk about f anything if about fishing, he would talk to you forever. We got a, another break coming up. I'll explain to this trend line. We come up basically what you're looking at here is just a 15 minute chart showing the ABCD. When you see you draw the line like this, as long as that line lands up against the Fibonacci number, it makes it a valid trend line. In other words, once it comes down here. That means that the fact that it hit that 61% retracement means it's a valid trend line. So the next correction would be equal to that. So the valid trend line would bring you from here and then down to here and then up to there. The next time I do a live uh, trading thing, which will probably be in, in, near the end of September, I do two a year. So the one around the end of September, I'll probably cover this. It's a very good, it's a very good way for entries. It really is. It's like everything else. It's not 100%. Get out of the 100% category. That puppy does – well, it does exist, but unfortunately all of my 100% uh, classes have been sold out. If you still have an interest, give me a call, and I've got two shares of the Brooklyn Bridge I could trade with you. But anyway, that's the main thing is to keep you this. 877-927-6648.
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accreted transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks, and I posted a chart of the gold up here again, and then I put a chart of the treasury bonds right behind it. Folks, if you're if you're having trouble with your trading, try to get into a market that's trending strongly, like to the downside, like the, you know, the uh, bonds were. You know, wait and sell that retracement, uh, three eight two in this case at one forty six, six one eight comes in at one forty four, the three eight two comes in at one forty one, and it, it's broken. You know, five bucks from the high this week with virtually no heat. Also, keep an eye on the euro. Same thing. The euro keeps making lower highs. And it had a little bit of a breakout, and where did it stop? Exactly at an ABCD number. I think I have that one that we talked about uh, just a day or so ago. Let's get that one up so we can see it. And I think we'll be just fine. Uh, at least I hope it will. Hello, operator. Uh, uh, no, I did the Euro one. Did it? Did it do it? Yes, it's, there it is. Hold on, just a second. I found it. And yeah, we'll bring this up so you can see it here. Time's running out. Here we got the weekend starting up. And get this up here. And there you go. You can see here we broke above, went right up to this ABCD. You can see that little ABCD swing right above the 3A2. Stops at the 50% and then says goodbye and immediately drops, you know, 800 bucks. Those are the kind you want to be looking at very closely. Now, remember, next week uh, we are going to have, uh, for sure, 100 personnel with just like ivory soap, it's 99.9 .9 of Mr. 
uh, Norm Winsky will be our guest uh, coming on uh, on the uh, the fifteenth. So that'll be a very interesting one uh, to ooh, wow. It says he's not on until the uh, hmm. I got to mess up there. I know he's on Monday. Well, I double check it anyway. He will be on. Listen, thanks for joining me today. Uh, remember, live every day in an attitude of gratitude. May God bless and do something for your neighbors, folks. See you on the flip side tomorrow. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.